Earlier this week, I stumbled across something incredible. An ARG that I think has the potential to rival Petscop in terms of production quality, story, and creativity. I was browsing Reddit, as I often do, when I was prodded to take a look at a new project. I went over to this video and I was so captivated that I had to watch everything on the channel in just one sitting. What I saw was gameplay footage of a lost PS1 game from a company I had never heard of before. A game with automatically generated landscapes, a rampant AI, and an amalgamation of beautifully terrifying themes. It didn't take long before I realized I needed to cover this. What I'm talking about is a project called Valle Verde, made by Argentinian creator Alluvium. This project began on October 5th of 2022, when Alluvium posted three videos, an introduction provided by himself, and two videos. They're both in Spanish, but in the second one, there's English subtitles. At the time of writing this script, there are less than 10,000 combined views on this channel. So I highly encourage you to pause this video and head over to Alluvium's channel, where you can watch the videos in their entirety before you watch my deep dive into them. If you're an English speaker, which I bet you are, the first and third videos have English subtitles and they're an easy watch. But please, this ARG is criminally underrated, and I promise you that in the future it'll go down as one of the greats. So go ahead and watch it before you get started here. Done with that? Cool. Here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna break down the content of these videos and identify all of the imagery and themes that we run into along the way. After that, I'm gonna try and piece together some story from what we've learned and hopefully make some good predictions about where the story might go in the future. I'm also gonna throw out there, as per usual with my channel, there are some jump scares in this, but they won't come without warning from me. I'll have some timers up and make it pretty obvious that they're on their way. Let's begin. But of course, before we do that, I wanna quickly ask you that if you enjoy this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you enjoy ARG content, check out my amazing video analyzing the June Archives ARG, and also check out the rest of my content. Consider joining my Discord, the link to which can be found in the description of this video. That's all for my shameless promotion, and thank you. Our journey here begins with the first video uploaded by Alluvium, an introduction. It's a video that Alluvium filmed of himself using Instagram, where he sets the stage for the lost game that he discovered. Something to note here is that Alluvium mentions about halfway through the video that the actual events described happened about two years ago, though he's just putting it all together right now. The video is brief and begins with him showing off a VHS tape. Alluvium explains that what he's about to say is difficult to put into words, but he marches on nonetheless. He says he was exploring the Municipal Ecological Park, a large park in the city of La Plata, Argentina. While he was exploring off the beaten path, he came across a strange sight. In a clearing that he said resembled a doorway, he found a small little statuette of the Virgin Mary, nearby which was a marker. He came back with a shovel, digging up the marker, revealing what looked to be a tin lunchbox. Opening it revealed styrofoam and a neatly packaged VHS tape. He takes it home, plays it, and learns that the VHS tape shows footage of an unreleased PS1 game called Valle Verde, Green Valley. He confesses that he isn't too much into video games himself, and for that reason didn't know that this game was lost media at first. That's partially why these videos weren't uploaded until right now. Recently, he got talking to a friend about the subject who had his interest piqued, and they discovered that the game was lost together. The two are now digitizing the VHS tape, and Alluvium is releasing the footage after he analyzes every frame just to make sure he's not uploading anything illegal. He ends the video by requesting that if you know anything about the game, to please come forward. This is a riveting introduction. Not only is this a strange thing to find out in the woods, but there's just so many questions. Why on earth would somebody bury a tape well enough to be found and preserved, but also off the beaten path? There's literally a marker here. It, it wasn't hidden well at all. My guess is that somebody else buried this tape out in the woods with the intention of recovering it or getting it to someone else, but why would they even do that in the first place? Does it contain something that you don't want around your home? These are all questions that can't be answered just yet. So let's go ahead and move on to the gameplay. We're shifting now to the 20 minute video of someone playing the game directly from the tape. Now remember, this isn't Alluvium himself playing the game. It's old footage that someone else took and he found. The video opens with a familiar but beautiful sight, the original PlayStation opening. After that, the video transitions to some build notes, which are very important. 
right off the bat we could see a date, February 14th, 1997. We also learned that we're looking at an unreleased game from Japan, which happens to be under investigation. What? In a report summary, we can also see that this tape documents a malfunctioning AI, corrupted learning data, and issues regarding product specialized hardware. These are all pretty strange things and don't make much sense in the current context. Hopefully we'll get some answers as we move forward. The next scene on the tape is a loading screen for a company called Onyxware, which we can assume are the developers of Valle Verde. Curiously after this, we get a title card for the Shizuoka Institute of Science and Technology, a university that does exist in real life. We don't quite know the extent of these two entities and their involvement in the game. Is there perhaps some AI technology in this game that was created by the university in conjunction with the company? Or perhaps was it commissioned? After this, we see a screen that we can infer is a language selection page, offering gameplay in English, Italian, German, and Spanish. Take note of the fact that there are four languages, because that comes up later. Also, it's interesting how a Japanese game can't be played in Japanese, but okay. The game opens with happy sounding sound effects and a nice color palette. Right off the bat, you can see a lot of similarities to Animal Crossing, which continue throughout the video. Something weird happens during one of the first loading screens, though. The game specifically mentions not to unplug the brain device. What could that mean? It must have to do with the AI we haven't seen yet. The opening continues with a cute little animation of a plane flying until the camera enters you. You're prompted to type, and the text again references the player device, saying to use its keyboard. Is the brain perhaps some sort of computer peripheral? The character enters their name, Test05, and the person they speak with, Roddy, gladly welcomes them to Valle Verde. You're taken through a character selection screen, and after seeing the island from the sky, you arrive at Valle Verde, specifically in Debug Shima. The character progresses forward, explores the town, and gets the chance to meet the mayor, where you'll get your first inclination that things aren't all that they seem. Speaking with the mayor, who gets the player a place to stay, is at first fine. But he takes the player around to be introduced to some others, and this is where things begin to spiral into madness. Just watch this clip, which doesn't contain jump scares per se, but it is a tad creepy. So you're introduced to five people from different countries. Jansung from Georgia, Kazuya from Japan, Oliver from Ireland, Chloe from France, and finally, Mateus from Argentina. The same country as our narrator. But of course, you can't see any actual characters, only strange pictures of photorealistic and horrifying children. Chloe's house seems to have blood all over the front entrance. Only, Mateus is different. He's the only one who has an actual visible character, a cat, and his photo isn't yet distorted. Mateus is someone I'll talk about later on, so keep him in the back of your head. The mayor, Foxo, takes the character to the center of the town, which is a bit of a glitchy transition, and shows off the statue of himself, which is made of solid gold. He says that the smiling one has given him authority over this area, and that he owns it. What? As a parting piece of information, Foxo points you in the direction of two scientists to visit if you're interested in robotics or knowledge, then ends the conversation by giving you some money and telling you to remember that during the next election. Strangely, with no explanation, Foxo immediately zooms back over to you and puts you into crushing debt before you go on your way. The frame glitches for a bit, indicating that this was perhaps an abnormal transition, some sort of glitch though you begin moving on to your first new zone. According to the bottom text, this is an anomaly and is a spontaneously generated level. The player enters this level, followed by six more strange levels back to back. In the first level, the player is surrounded by pieces of cake. Then they enter a terrifying area being watched eagerly by giant eyes. In the next, they're surrounded by piles of gold. Everything is painted gold. In the background, you can hear the introduction to Pink Floyd's song, Money, being played. 
you can also see pieces of art, such as Mask Still Life 3, a painting that I recognized because I talked about it during my Disturbing Painting Iceberg chart video, which I highly recommend you watch after this one. But anyways. After the gold area, the player heads to a creepy location where you can hear a baby cry. The sky is red, and at this stop, things go downhill very quickly. The player is jump-scared by what looks to be a baby's face, and the world begins to rain blood. The player is forced to run as fast as possible to the next area while being chased by some entity. Very strange, and we'll revisit this specifically later on. In the following room, the player is surrounded by record players and TVs, while a seemingly cheerful song talks about resting and taking it easy. In the next area, shadow people stand still, seemingly cowering in fear, where audio in the background can be heard from the legendary Oppenheimer interview, where he claims that he has become death, destroyer of worlds. Two people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. In the seventh area, the player can't see very far as an overwhelming darkness looms over. But what they can make out are statues of people who appear golden, looking at themselves in a mirror. The player trucks along, moving to a new place. So you might have picked up on this, but it's very likely that these rooms correspond to the seven deadly sins. The first area shows pieces of cake lying everywhere, representing gluttony. Following that space is the one where all the eyes look down on the player, likely representing envy. The gold pretty obviously corresponds to greed. Next is the red location, which is a bit harder to pin down. The blood immediately made me think of wrath, but it's more likely that the babies represent lust as sort of an unwanted product of desire. I say that because there's clearly some abortion symbolism in this part of the video, made obvious by the low poly fetuses or, or babies, the blood, and the entity that chases you out looks a lot like a hand holding forceps. So for that reason, I'd say that this room represents lust. The room with TVs and a voice talking about being lazy obviously corresponds to sloth. In the sixth room, based on the recordings of Oppenheimer, I think it's pretty safe to assume that this one corresponds to the sin of wrath. And the final room with people looking in mirrors corresponds to pride. Now why is a player, in a game that looks like Animal Crossing, subjected to this terrible journey of witnessing sin? The why is unknown, but I do think we can certainly say that these rooms represent sin. When the player finally makes it through that ordeal, they're met with statues of angels and a heavenly gateway, which upon entering takes them quickly to a church before they're whisked back to town with another anomaly message showing up in the corner. He enters a store where he's greeted by a few women, but as he moves to the corner, he runs into Mateus. Their conversation is a bit strange. Mateus quickly requests help, asks the player if they're an agent, asks about Chloe, asks to see his mom, and most importantly, says that he wants out. Guys, I don't think he's an NPC. And I don't think the AI or whatever forces are involved with this game liked what Mateus had to say, because the players quickly teleported away to a church. In an ethereal sequence, the player moves through the church while the poem, Lovely Lady in Blue, Teach Me How to Pray, is spoken in the background. Lovely lady dressed in blue, teach me how to pray. God was just your little boy, tell me what to say. Approaching the priest and talking to him doesn't last long, however as the priest makes but one comment and the player is again whisked away to the main island. Another anomaly message can be seen. The player opens the settings menu, which isn't a big deal except for, wait, learning data? What does that mean? After fumbling through some settings, the player enters an airplane minigame, though that doesn't last long as he's quickly brought back to the main town. The player seems to find some sort of secret path or noclip zone and is brought to yet another ethereal plane where he walks through a gateway to an even creepier area. Finding demonic looking cats and experiencing yet another jump scare. This jump scare is very difficult to make out and to be honest, I'm not even sure what this is. 
It looks like some flying head creature with detached hands comes flying at you and seemingly just breaks the screen. After this, the character is in a trance-like state and a message in multiple languages can be seen. They all ask you to turn the console on on March 22nd, 1997. What does that mean? And I'll remember the four languages from earlier, because strangely, there's a fifth language at the bottom, which just looks like gibberish, though maybe this is just the AI malfunctioning. The player is yet again teleported somewhere, and is shown alongside an anomaly message, when the player begins to have a conversation with themselves. The player's own voice seems to guide them over to a pile of food in the distance, encouraging them to eat. The player glances at what looks like a pile of beans? After eating them, he gets a series of rapid messages, this time not from himself, but from someone named The Accuser. These happen very quickly, so I'll go ahead and read them off. What have you done? Look at you. You've ruined yourself. Look what you've done, imbecile. Why are you just standing there? Take as many fruits as you can. Quick, time is running out. You know you'll die, right? If you're up to your neck, why not keep going down? Do you have something else than the consolation of this earth? Take what you can. What are you doing there, losing time? You're already stained, aren't you? Go on, what difference does it make? Your destiny is sealed. These messages are coming from the devil. In Christian literature, the devil is often referred to as the accuser because he accuses people of their sin, urging them to plunge deeper and deeper into it. If the devil can convince you that you're nothing more than a sinner, and you'll always be a sinner, he can turn you away from Christ, which he's clearly trying to do based on those messages. But what does that have to do with the game? The player ends up back at a field of angel statues, and then in the presence of a literal angel in front of a gate. As he tries to approach, he's plunged into some hellscape, trembling in fear and turning into a scary figure. Recovering, the player navigates the hellscape, running into the scientist mentioned earlier. The brain is once again referenced, and the player just leaves. He comes to a house with an Argentinian flag, perhaps belonging to Mateus. Upon entering, a Spanish song can be heard playing, where the singer suggests that they are going to die soon. The player reviews some art sketches, all of which were made by Argentinian artist Benjamin Solari Paravinci. The player goes to a bedroom, looking at paintings, finally glancing at one of Jesus, who, after a long stare, becomes animated. Upon gazing into the heavenly sight, the player is addressed by someone named Est vir que adest, or in English, it is the man before you, an uncommon and roundabout way of referring to Jesus, specifically referring to John 18.38, but I won't get too far into that specifically. Jesus presents the player with divine mercy and prompts him to visit where his body lies. Following this, the footage ends. Wow, that was a trip. Before I tear apart any of this, I just want to say that the production level here is insane. Props to Alluvium for creating a lost game project that you really can get lost in. In just 20 minutes, I'm insanely impressed. I hope you are too, and I really hope you watch his video. Now, here comes the hard part. What does any of this mean? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I just don't have a perfect answer of what's going on here. The fact is, this series is very new, and from here, the series could go in one of many directions. This video was wild, and I want to know everything, but with the information I have, I, I just can't figure it out. Let's just start somewhere easy, identifying some themes. The first and most obvious theme is Christianity. In fact, this whole story is guided in part by a sort of redemption saga. The player navigates a world of sin, is tempted by Satan, and gives in, falling to his lowest, Though when the time is right, Jesus presents himself, and he's able to receive divine mercy from God. As beautiful as that is, what on earth does it have to do with a lost PlayStation game and an AI? At this point, I really don't know. There are plenty of other hints about Christianity here and there, like all the references to the Virgin Mary, the name Teresa being used, but I don't know about the religious connection. It's a point that'll have to be further looked into once an update comes out. 
More than the other sins showcased in the video, greed and gold seems to be a very pervasive theme in the video. I mean, statues of gold, piles of gold, Mayor's insistence that everything belongs to him as well as him taking all of your money just seemed like a strange detail to point out. What if we try and shift things back towards understanding the game itself? We get lots of references to the brain, which we can infer is some sort of in-development peripheral that you could use with your game. Perhaps this was being developed by the Shizuoka Institute of Science and Technology. Next, we get references throughout the video to anomalies, machine learning, and AI. Now, okay, stepping back from the art for a second, I can totally see why this decision was made. It's playing off of things like the personalization theory in Super Mario 64, the idea that a game learns from you and finds unique ways to scare you. Though by the end of the video, we don't have much insight into how this AI works, just that it makes strange anomalies. Hopefully in a future update, we can look farther into this. Perhaps the most scary thing about this tape is, what's happening to the kids? Are these children players of the game who were somehow sucked into it? Why does Matthias seem to have some sort of sentience? Does this have to do with the brain device? And something else I want to consider. Are Matthias and the narrator the same person? Uh, this is a totally random and strange thought I had, but this picture just looks like a lot like our narrator, or what he might have looked like as a child, at least. Maybe he's not as innocent as he seems, or maybe he knew a bit too much when looking for this tape. Or maybe he was supposed to find it. Perhaps a long time ago, the brain device stole a piece of his consciousness and copied it into this game demo, and someone, somewhere, wants him to discover the truth. Who knows? There's something else I haven't mentioned during this video that I noticed near the end. You probably could have seen this by now, but throughout this video there are a ton of jump scares of sorts that are fit in in one single frame. While often it's just these creepy faces, there's one that seems to be repeating. I think I found some sort of entity that's shown up once or twice. Could this guy right here be the same one that jump scared us later in the ethereal plane? I'm not entirely sure, but perhaps this is some sort of manifestation of the AI. Writing a conclusion for this one is tough. I've dug a bit and I've found out what certain things reference, but we're at this stage of the ARG where so much is just shoved in to reference things or just look creepy, and I think without much more direction, I can't form a conclusive prediction about where the story is gonna go, besides identifying the immediate plot about receiving mercy from God. Regardless of where this ARG goes in the future, I implore you to show this creator some love and put Valle Verde on your radar. This is an insanely talented guy here. This project is crazy and I'm bewildered that the ARG doesn't have as many views as it should. Hopefully with some more traffic directed towards the channel, we can get a part two sooner rather than later. Thank you all for joining me at the Seed Butter channel today. Please subscribe and turn bell notifications on so you can be made aware of a part two to this video, which I'll make as soon as I can. I wanna thank you all for sticking around this entire time and bid you good night.